episode 252. I'm your Joe Dix, joined by Matt Sellner. Hello. The Free Cheese is a weekly video game podcast about video games brought to you once a week by thefreecheese.com. We made it through E3, Matt. Yeah. And, I don't know about you, I'm not sick. I'm not either. I got a little sunburn. A little sunburn. I missed out on Tuesday, but, you know, well, uh... Yeah, you went, uh, you were breaking bottles and shit down in D.C., <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah, something like that, yeah. Yeah. Yep, uh, it's all... Mr. Oveshkin himself raised the Stanley Cup on a bus right in front of me. See, that's where he fucked up. You went mm. all the way down. I saw him right in front of me on a picture on my phone that someone posted to Reddit a lot. It's all right. It was nice and seeing him in person. Could you smell him? Uh, I can smell DC. No. Let's have the battle. Did you vomit in the street? No. Did you bleed on anything? No. You didn't do it, right? Oh, well. Uh, was it good? Was it worth it? Was it worth missing out on Nintendo's? The Smash Direct, yes. It was very worth missing out on the Smash Direct. Ah, oh boy. That oh boy. I watched happily on the bus ride home. Yeah. Oh, uh, you missed out on Taco Bell. But it's okay, because well, we're going to have that tonight. tonight, you know. Yeah. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Um, yeah. How about you? You're I, Well, I got a little sunburn, and that's the amount of my sickness because of Tuesday. But yeah. You? I, I got sun. Oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> I'm right there. I mowed the lawn. There you go. Yeah, that'll do it. Um, I don't know. Weird week. Like, just, it's just off. Like, you know, we expect all this. I don't know. We usually compile news for this, and it's all the news just been out there. We've been watching all week. There's too much like, news to like recap right now. Obviously, look, I want to sound like that editor that goes to E3 and like, man, it's just a long weekend. Yeah, it is. Even watching it from a couch with friends and it was laughing, long. it was exhausting. It's long. Like I. I got back into work and everyone's like, "Oh yeah, I haven't seen you in a while." I'm like, "Yeah, E3." And I'm like, you go. I'm like, no, "No," but like, it's still like we fucking podcasted and we're watching shit and Matt's taking notes the whole time and just it's a lot. Um, so fun. It's still fun. We drank a lot of pussy, you know. That's all. <laughs> that's all that really matters. I got un can left. There is one can left. I saw that. A lot of bing right. left. A lot of bing. I've been slowly drinking the bing, but you, it's fucking overpowering. That man. is grenadine. And the bing runs right through you. Like, I drink a can of that, and I'm like... Pissing blood? Yeah, like and also color sweating blood. Like, it, it's a lot of a lot of liquid that gets added to your body. Uh, so, yeah, this is not going to be a, you know, full-ass show like we'd normally have, but uh, I did think it was important that we get together for a show here. Um, so we're going to do a little bit of now playing what you've been playing last week. Uh, we'll talk about kind of our favorite stuff of E3, that one thing from E3 where we're like, yo, what happened? Uh, and then you and I are going to definitively pick a winner of E3 and I already know it's going to be a bloodbath. Um, just kidding. We both choose EA. Uh, and then I thought (laughs) it'd be fun. Wait, you missed one? (laughs) I thought it'd be fun uh, to wrap up the show um, by choosing. I, look, we'll talk about Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. There are currently 65 characters. I expect them to get to at least 70, so I want us to pick our final five characters. I think that's the way to do I can it. Deal with that. Yeah, um, but in the meantime, let's talk a little bit uh, about what we played this week, including Quake Champions. You uh, you got farther than me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got the game to load on my MacBook, which surprised the heck out of me. I'm honestly shocked, and the gun texture didn't run or look. Actually, no, it looked good. The gun did, yeah. Everything else was. Mm, yeah, so and running at 15 to 20 frames, somewhere yeah. in that. That's not bad for a 2012 MacBook Pro, running boot camp with no dedicated. Oh wait, hold on. 15 to 20 with no other character models on the screen. Once that Oh yeah, once, AI. The, once the AI got on, <laughs> done. Um, yeah, but the Quake Champions is free right now. Free for the week. However, you hop in now, you got it at Forever. least through the beta from what I gathered. I, don't, I might be... Yeah, you, I didn't read the fine print uh, on yeah. that. But, but you got it for a while. Yeah, so, so. I... I got it in the hopes that I would get a new uh, computer here. And soon. I got it too. And uh, I was going to 
play it, I restarted my computer because that it's been on for like a week straight. It's yeah. about time. Mm-hmm. Restarted, hopped in the shower, came out, and mm-hmm. saw a blue screen of death mm-hmm. on my Windows machine mm-hmm. last night. And I haven't been able to fix it since. Think you got a solution tonight. for tonight? Stay tuned next week to see tonight's, if it's a little pissed off. Or tonight. my computer's in the street. We'll see. So you got to tweet either the success or the pictures of the broken parts dismembered <laughs> in the street. Well, I'm not going to throw it. I'm going to be smart about it. I'm going to sell the parts and keep the case. Maybe throw the case. Yeah, that might the be the part. Yeah. That's the, yeah. No, I, yeah, no, you got farther. Looks cool. It does look cool. It's like Quake, just yeah. prettier with a weird class ability. But no, I was, I was half joking bringing that up, but I knew we'd be able to talk about Maybe next week, you know. <laughs> uh, we played Destiny, though, a little bit. We did play Destiny. A lot of it, actually. Not a little bit. We played a lot of Destiny yeah, it's, this week. Yeah, it's weird. And I'm actually getting back into it by myself some, which yeah. is... That that caught me off guard. Didn't expect to see that text when I was at work. Yeah, <laughs> I I just hop in. I don't do the story content. I think me and you are going to run through War Mine once we find some time here, or at least a good significant amount of time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I just hop in. I play Crucible for... An hour or two, complete the challenges for the day, head back to the tower, cash in. I just call it a day. That, going back to the tower and cashing in, is so addictive. I know, dude. <laughs> like <laughs> Someone just got a new exotic auto rifle, which is essentially a minigun. I haven't had an itch like that since I smoked cigarettes. I tell you what. <laughs> like, that is something. When we were... <sighs> what the fuck were we doing? It was one of the nights after E3, you guys went home, and we were like, all right, night, see ya, see you in the morning, and then it was like, should we play Destiny? We played a bunch of Destiny, and then we were in the middle of a match, or like wrapping something up, and I was like, all right, guys, you want to go to the Traveler? Want to go to the Traveler? <laughs> I just ca- <laughs> it's, it's fucking weird, but I got that crown, man. I got that cool the ass. Crown. Now, that's, now I don't want the crown. That's the, that's the <laughs> thing, man. Once you get it, you're like, all right, I got it. Now what? Well, now I need to get the fucking deer head. That's the next thing. Uh, we talked a little bit about that. If uh, if you caught our E3 uh, morning shows this week, we uh, chatted a little bit about that. But um, yeah, it 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 feels good to shoot shit. I don't know. No, yeah, like that is that was the best one of the best parts of the Halo yeah. games. And Bungie knows how to make a shooter and feels is almost exactly like that. Yep. Um, that's why I hop in and play the Crucible for an hour to two hours and try to complete the challenges and move on with my day. Like, I, I can't do what I did to myself, Destiny 1, because I'll never come back to that game. Yeah, no. I want to do something, other, like, I haven't done Trials of the Nine because it can't. Yeah, but I don't have a fire team big enough at the moment. I want to do that. I started, you need, I, you I started mess. yeah, I started messing around the competitive a little bit. That's weird. Competitive. It's the competitive, like, Crucible playlist thing. Oh, yeah, what's different about it? I think I it's, did, like, one or two. It's round, but... it's round, it's like elimination round base. It's like playing Rainbow Six. Oh, weird. It's weird, and it's like, there's objective, like, it's essentially like playing Counter-Strike almost. Oh, okay. But there's a, you have a set number of revives in a round, so, like, you can revive oh, a down th- Oh, okay, it. yeah, yeah. But it's only four, so once they're down, they're down. Yeah, and I usually burn through them all for our team. <laughs> I mean, like, I don't know. Yeah. No, 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 no. You can get revived if someone comes to get you. Oh, the resp- you have a set number of respawns, though. Yeah, but you can only bring up your teammates so many times in a round. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. can't resp- if you die, you're dead unless a teammate. Yeah, 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 but you. no, I've I've been the one who's the problem. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I mean it was fine, but like it's trying to be a Counter Strike, and it's Counter Strike does Counter Strike better. Yeah, Rainbow Six, yeah, so that was weird, but no regular Crucible, I'm I'm fine with that. Yeah, it's good. It's good. I bought a new controller finally. Welcome to the party with a new Dude. DualShock Four. What a fucking... I have two of them now. I have the black one. That is l- game changer, literally. The the other two, I got three Dual Shocks. Two of them have the rubber worn away on the left analog stick, um, and all three of them have a problem with one or both of the R triggers. Great. Um, <laughs> I think the one without the rubber wearing away on the analog stick, the R one button, that one gets jammed. I noticed that when I was playing Bloodborne a lot, because um, you go to yep and mm-hmm. just light light. <laughs> uh, and then the other night, I had I had the two controllers up there that. Both had the the rubber worn away, and I got one plugged in charging, and the other one I'm using. The one I'm using dies. So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna grab the other one. Hot swap. Pull it out. I'm in the middle of fucking crucible, and I'm like blasting shit. I'm like, what's happening? R2 stuck. Ha- like you release it, and it stays halfway depressed, and it's like, all right, well now I'm depressed, 
and I'm shooting shit. You should get my exotic it. weapon I have now where the 99 <laughs> round clip. <laughs> yeah, I, I need it because I'm wasting all this fucking ammo. But no, I got the new controller, that, that thing. Because there's a... The, that's the good thing about E3. You get all these good sales. So yeah, that's was, true. Uh, I almost bought another Xbox controller, but I really don't need it. I've got the one, and then Mark left his here, so all God right, forbid. You go. you know. But yeah, the, the new DualShock. Plus the... I won't harp on this for too much longer, but the changing of the light bar... Putting that so you can see it from the front. Hint. That's so good. Because that light bar, when it, they announced it, was like, oh, that's a really cool thing. And then it was like, I'd never see it. Mm-hmm. Except for the reflection in the TV, and now I'm mad. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I almost bought another controller, but I, 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 I refrained. I don't need yeah. I got three more. Yeah, already. if you got, yeah, <laughs> you're, you're good. Um, what else did you get into this week? Uh... I talked about this too a little bit during the morning shows that morning after Bethesda. I touched a tiny bit of Moon Crash, uh, the Prey, the new Pre- Prey DLC that came out. Uh, yeah, I actually watched a lot more of it, about five times more of it than I actually played. So Moon Crash, in case someone missed it, yeah. So it's uh, it's like a Prey roguelike thing with some story elements involved. Uh, I, I it. Fits into the lore of the main game, but it's outside the timeline a little bit. Um, one, so this was the best way I found to explain it to you, and it seemed the most effective. Think yeah. of it as Assassin's Creed, and there's a Desmond character. And sure. Desmond's the one that goes into the Animus. Well, in this Prey DLC, is a similar thing. You are a character. I forget the, the person's name, but you go into a simulation. Tommy. Huh? We'll call him Tommy. Sure, Tommy. Yeah. Tommy hops into the simulation. And uh, he has to perform these escape simulations with five different characters. And the unique thing about this is each character has a different, like, skill tree or starting weapons or whatever. Uh, And they each have their different skills, which builds upon trying to unlock different parts of the base. So uh, a base might be, like, out of power or something like that. Only, like, a certain character can go in and fix the power for that station. Uh, and you kind of, you know, you, you keep going through and you essentially you complete a run when you escape the base. If you die, that character stays dead inside that simulation run. However, you can reset the run if you really want to. That's cool. When you reset the run, though, different modifications happen. The enemies reset. And there's a bunch of factors that go into it where there's a lot more unknowns going into your reset simulation than it is going in with character four and kind of knowing the yeah. layout of the land. Um, so it's kind of a risk reward thing. You earn simulation points by killing uh, aliens and escaping and doing consecutive escapes in a row and all this stuff. And you use that to build up your inventory and buy guns going into the run that your characters might not have at the start. Um, it's a really smart thing. Uh, and then each character does have his own story beats that you have to unlock by escaping with them once. And then once you do the story beats, uh, the main objective of this is to, in one simulation, escape with all five characters. Uh, that's the oh, main wow. objective with the game. Uh, however, like I said, there is like this Desmond character we're calling Tommy. Yeah, Tommy. As you come in and out of the simulation, there's some stuff going on with the spacecraft he's in. Um, He's working with a company called Chasma Corp, which is mentioned in the main game. Uh, I didn't get too far into that lore, but I know they're like a, a rival to the uh, company that um, that owns Talos One, the space station, in the main game, from what I remember. So uh, I'm sure there's going to be some neat little twist or little thing there at the end to feed into the main story, uh, which... Would be cool, but uh, yeah, no, I'm really happy they did this. I like the roguelike aspect of it. Yeah, like literally, if your dude dies with all your gear, like if you have another character remaining, you can go save that gear and just get out. Oh, that's and cool. um, you know, save instead of spending more simulation points. Just yeah, that's cool. Keeping the gear, so a um, lot of a lot of good stuff in that. Yeah. And so I want to play it more. I only did one run, but I have watched a lot of it and I like what I see. Gotta get into that one. Bray's really good, man. I. Like Bioshock, or like this game? Yeah, I know. I spent a, a few simulation points this week in Splatoon 2's Octo Expansion. Oh, yeah, that came out. They do... That was mentioned briefly during the Smash Direct at E3. <laughs> they, we're we're going to talk Did about you? it. We're <laughs> right, talk well, about I'll Nintendo. save. I'll refrain. But, yeah, so the, the Octo Expansion... Um, so did you watch any of the Splatoon... We watched the stuff... 
the the opening the night before Nintendo's. Oh, you're talking about the Invitational thing? Yeah. Right? The, oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you watch the finals of Splatoon or, or, or the I did Smash not get a Invitational thing? To. I watched a little bit of the Smash stuff. Um, the the Splatoon finals. They uh, the producer of the game came out at the end, thanked everybody, gave them the trophy, took pictures, yeah, 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 and then they cut to, hey, check this out, and then Octo expansion dropping. They cut to the Ashley. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, they so one it was announced that. Splatoon's going to continue to get updates throughout the rest of the year, uh, okay. through December. That was more than promised because it was only one year, right? It's supposed to be July and then done. Okay. Um, so they're going to continue through December with some new stages, too. Oh, nice. Um, oh, cool. So they're going to do at least one weapon every month, I think is what they said. Or they might still keep up with the weekly weapon. I forget how they've been doing it. but uh, yeah. Whatever it is, they're going to continue that clip. The stages it seems like it'll be fewer than what they're doing on average but you'll still get some new ones yeah that's fine that's better than it getting cut off at in a month so yeah i'll take that um but then the octo expansion dropped so we kind of got a hint of what the octo expansion was when they first announced it and they've kind of shown a little bit here and there um but you play as an octoling agent eight no memory of anything at all you just wake up jason Bourne. got it um and it's 80 different puzzle stages and they're all forcing you to use different weapons um that you haven't used and traverse the kind of world in the, in the map in a, in a way that you probably haven't um so the whole thing's kind of based in the 80s like it, it pulls a lot from mm-hmm. the 80s um and like early 90s kind of hip-hop new york subway vibe kind of thing i mean you got a vibe of that in the trailer that initial reveal trailer with the whole biggie and tupac thing yeah right? yeah yeah you see them uh pearl and marina both is uh biggie and tupac and then you see um there's a lot of that like so every stage you go into like the title of the stage has some reference to a hip-hop song um you just read it and you're like wait that's hold on that's from fucking juicy or that's from whatever right like it, you're reading it all and you're like that's this, that's this, that's a deep cut. That's cool. Um, they do a fucking, for the first time you meet Pearl and Marina, you don't meet them. I haven't met them face to face yet, but um, like through the intercom, Pearl just starts freestyling. And you're like, sure, this is, yep, got it. Um, but the stages themselves, it's, it's an interconnected subway system. And you kind of go dot by dot by dot by dot by dot to, um, to try each challenge or complete each challenge. And you will. You're like, it, I, so you showed me the map yeah, earlier. Yeah. Like you go through these challenges, kind of essentially like unlocking the map. But if you've ever seen a Metro system before, all these different lines interchange. Right. So there's different points in the map where you may unlock a new line. And if something gets tough, say like it's on the blue line, you, you could, jump could like green. hop to yellow or yep. whatever and yeah. kind of keep going that way. And then, I started seeing them start to interwove or interchange a little bit. That was really cool. So there's a lot of different alternate paths if you do get stuck. And I, yeah, and like I, I, there were points where I was like, fuck this. Um, And there's a cool system. So after you fail a certain number of times, because every time you, each stage, you're given a finite amount of lives. So if you, you know, fall off the side of the stage or if you miss time a jump or an enemy kills you, you lose a life. Um, If you lose all three or five or one of your lives, depending on the, the, the stage, you'll have to restart using your your credits, so to speak. Um, and you can always replay a level to earn more credits again um, or try a, di- a, a level you've completed with a different weapon to get even more bonus credits. Um, but you definitely don't want to do that. Um, they... These levels were short too. The couple I saw you play, uh, yeah, no they're, more and they're, than less than a, maybe a minute, maybe two minutes. If of that. you know what you're doing, right? Like some of them, there were a few that I got just fuck. It, it took me a while. Like there was one I spent an entire episode of King of the Hill, fucking with. <laughs> like All right. I don't even remember watching the episode. I just remember like fuck, 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 and I was just burning through points trying to retry it, retry it, retry it. But that's like you trying to figure out the level, though. Like once you kind of get the design, like once you run through it. Uh-uh. Because there's uh, the, okay, all right. some some levels, they have a, a pretty generous checkpoint system. That one in particular, um, it was a shoot 30 of these boxes, no checkpoints. You need to ride the rails and jump between the rails and time all your shots perfectly. And I was just trying, trying, trying. Oh, all right. Sucked. 
And I there were points where like I got to t- box 27, 28, 29. Of course you did, yep. And, and then, then done all the way back. All the way back. So um the nerves hit like the end of a bloodborne boss where you're like, oh fuck it, it's no more hit. Don't kill me. Uh but you'll what's cool is you'll as you complete stages, you unlock these little they're called mems. Um not memes. That yeah, they're they're like little <laughs> You know what they look like? If you took Splatoon characters and turned them into those little towels that you could... Did you ever buy those little towels at like the Disney store where you'd throw them in the tub and they'd uh, expand? I know. All right. But yeah, they're like in yeah, a shape of... Yeah, okay. Yeah. It mm-hmm. looks like those or like little cookies or something mm-hmm. um, of Splatoon characters. And after you collect all of them from a collection, and, and the collections are based on the subway line, there's a shady cockroach dude. Uh, he's not a cockroach. I don't know what he is. He looks like it, though. Yeah. There's a shady dude in the corner, and he'll buy them from you. Um, in exchange for exclusive Octo gear to take back to Inkopolis once you're there. So, because once you complete this story and you collect the four Thangs, that's your main goal in this. <laughs> I love it. Thangs. 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 You, you have to collect four Thangs. Um, once you collect those four Thangs, you can then go back to Inkopolis. I don't know if there's, there's probably a final boss or something at that point. Um, but then you can play as an Octoling in multiplayer, which I that's that's the that's the thing. That's the thing. Yeah, it is where I refrain because I don't intend on buying this expansion. It's not something that interests me. Uh, Until but, you're getting splatted up by a little Octo Boy and you're like, no, nope, that's I all right. Wish I were an Octo Boy. I'm, not, I'm a, a inkling boy. Um, it's it's good, though. Like, if you were, if you enjoyed the single player content of Splatoon 2 and you're looking for more of that and are really, like, challenging more of that, I think this is. I like the challenge part. That's the part that intrigues me about this. But I just yeah. uh, I tried the single player. I I just can't get myself into it. Yeah, the, but I never bought that game thinking the single player was going to be the draw for me. Yeah, no, the, the single player. I I went back through again a couple months back just to get one of the hero the P, weapons or yeah P ninety guy yeah. Um, and it's it's good, but you never feel unless you start using a weapon that wasn't designed for that level mm-hmm. um, or intended for that level. You don't really feel like powerless like this i feel fucking helpless and it's but it's always like i fucked that up I, like it's really smart no, that's, level good. Design. that's, like, that's good they, they really did a, a, a great job with this um yeah, i don't know I'm, I'm excited to like keep it's good to be back in splatoon a little bit i'm not fully back into the multiplayer yet i haven't done that i don't know if i'm ready for that grind i get that especially because we're doing destiny so i need yeah. that yeah those two wires can't a real really boy wrong. shooter <laughs> um yeah and then uh hollow knight came out yeah for the shadow Switch. drop yeah um that was also mentioned for five seconds during the smash direct at e3 that was all i needed i it's funny because there's been so many like every nintendo direct since last year i've been like oh where's hollow yeah. where's hollow yeah all um, the nindies all of them i'm like yep. where is it and then we come into e3 not even a fucking blip. Like not even yeah, in Yeah, I got as much time as overcooked. No, no, no. In my brain. Oh. Like I didn't I didn't come into this like we're gonna this is the time, we're gonna see Hollow Knight. I didn't think I completely forgot about it. Nothing. And we're sitting I was totally caught off guard. I was like <gasps> and it immediately grabbed my switch, eShop, fifteen bucks. Fifteen dollars. Yeah, so let's announce that. Yes, yeah, during the Smash Direct, if you blinked and missed it, <laughs> uh Hollow Knight is now out on Switch and evidently it's pretty good. Yeah, I like I played a bit of it on on PC last year, but um, I kept running into like frame issues. Not with the game, but because my hardware, I don't have a fucking Correct. GPU, so um, particle effects and things like that would just kind of d- not d- good, d- 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 not good. Um, as we saw with Quake Champions. <laughs> yeah, right. But dude, Switch handheld docks doesn't matter. Looks crystal clear. Runs sixty frames per second, like fluid. Um, that game is Metroid as fuck. It looked like it when we messed around with it before. Like, if you want Ori in your hands, this is the jams. I want to play Ori first. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. You, you, I got a little bit further than I did last time around. Not much further than that, but I'm starting to just fill in the map a little bit, get different things. I'm like almost at the point to upgrade my weapon, but I haven't found that mm-hmm. dude yet. But there's a couple of people who have been like, you probably gonna need a better weapon. You can't just keep running around with that thing. Um, not sound a good game though. 
Yeah, there was yeah. a lot of cool systems in that game. How like you had to buy the Metroid like Vania like map parts. If I remember and right, and you're filling yeah. the map out as you go. Like yeah, you. you f- I think you'll get the map for free if you find a map maker. But like before you can fill out the map, you have to go find the dude's wife and buy the uh, the quill mm-hmm. from her, and then that. Every time you go to the rest area and like kind of save state, it'll update your map with where you've been. Um, and then now there's a new thing. So the one thing that I find like really cool is they, funnily enough, took the Shovel Knight approach of all DLC is free. So you spend $15 once and everything they made is in there. I mean, they did that on PC and then when they brought it to Switch, all the content that had previously come out with the PC version is built into the Switch version. Plus Perfect. the final pack that's coming out, I think, in August... Um, that'll come as a free update as well, just for 15 bucks. It's good. Um, and I forgot my train of thought. Free DLC. Yeah, I know. There's something else. I don't remember. Oh, with the, with the DLC, they added up like a pin system. So you can kind of like in, in a breath of the wild style, oh, drop that's little that's locations nice. and say like, I should come back to this. That's um, good. But it's, really, it's a little bit roguelike in a way too, isn't it? Kind of like. Yeah, so it has that kind of Dark Souls element. Mm, yeah, um, that's it. Yeah. If you die, you need to go find your shadow and kill it to get your things back. It's the Dark Souls and Metroidvania, Mark. It sure is. Oh, he's I not know. here. Damn, I was waiting for a pun. I know. Um, and then uh, Donkey Kong. Beat Billy Mitchell's score? <laughs> I am officially... Higher scored than Billy Mitchell. I just need to play for five minutes. I can beat it now, right? (laughs) Um, So I'm going to go out here real quick and just make a uh, public declaration and recommendation. Go to Target. Go to Nintendo Switch section. Find yourself the Hori Nintendo Switch stand for $12.99. Hold your Switch horizontally or vertically. Vertical. Um. Portrait mode for the cell phone users. Tate mode for the Japanese users. Oh. Um, I think I previously on air called it Tate mode. <laughs> oh, well, Ben Barris for you. Um, but yeah, so uh, Donkey Kong, all of the, not all, sorry. Well, no, all. All of the hamster um, arcade archive stuff can be played in portrait mode. Um, however, they don't all like, take advantage of the full height of the screen yeah well like think of mario brothers like that doesn't make much sense but right. donkey kong perfect sense right um yeah but like i tried it with one of the another shooter that i have and like it you can do it that way but you still have just black emptiness on the mm, top and bottom yeah. of the screen but donkey kong takes full advantage ikaruga takes full advantage of the the height of the screen um there's a few other games out there on switch the i really want to buy it just because now i have the case of <laughs> too but the um that Namco collection that came out. Oh, nice. How um, about uh, Splatoon? <laughs> Splatoon, yeah. Totally. Um, but it's neat. I, I think for for twelve bucks, it's plastic, that's not bad at all. Yeah, it's, no. But it's, it doesn't feel like cheap plastic. You know, it's like got a good. I mean, weight it's a to stand. It. Like it's better than that kickstand. It's better than me. So I was sitting <laughs> on the fucking couch like this with my feet up, and the switch is kind of in my crotch, just. Yeah, the Joe is uh, leaning back on his chair and pointing at his crotch. Yeah. So a lot of crotch action with it the was, portrait mode. It was like the switch balanced there, and so then balance the, the back of it on the on the backs of my legs. So the balance part of that is bad with the dogs you own that like to crawl. They like to crawl. They like to lay on you. Every yeah, Velcro dogs. That's what they call Your them. Dog once alien like suckered mm-hmm. my face all throughout the night one time. Exactly. So yeah, he does. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember what else. I had one else. I was so thrilled. Yeah. So thrilled with Square Enix's press conference. Oh, yeah? So thrilled. I Like, hands down, the best conference of E3 by far um, that I decided not to wait any longer for Final Fantasy VII Remake and just play the fucking original yeah, game. Yeah, you were playing that. Where are you yeah. playing that at? I'm playing uh, the PS4 version. It's okay. pretty much yeah. the Steam port. Right, uh, right, right, right. brought that to Steam. Yeah, yeah. I brought a, a if way back on the podcast. I don't know, it's been quite a few months since I talked about me getting back into that game during a Final Fantasy sale. Uh, right, I remember that. I jumped back into that save, 
I was lost initially. That sucked. However, yeah. I was still at the part of the game where That's... I knew where the story was supposed to go, so I was able to figure it out within a half an hour, which was good. I remember you texting us and saying, I hate when you load up a save in an RPG and I have no idea where you were. Mm-hmm. And then later you texted us about playing that game mm-hmm. and I never connected <laughs> two dots. I was like, all oh, right, got it. Then. Yeah. Yeah, oh. that uh, I really like Final Fantasy VII. You never beat that one. I've never beaten it. Uh, Technically, I never got past the first disc, which, yeah. If I had the two here, I would make eye contact with them, kind of give them a wink and a nod, mm. and then move on with mm. my day. But, uh, mm. yeah, I'm at, uh, for those that have played the game, I'm at Shinra Headquarters, which is a few hours into the game, but before it opens up, uh, Shinra Headquarters is when it really is, like, fucking, it just, you're like, what the fuck am I playing at points? Uh, and it gets good. Because you think the game is something going into that. You yeah. think you know your main antagonist. And then events happen at where I'm at. And mm. the antagonist shifts fully to something else. To and it's, Yeah, essentially. Yeah. All right. But before that, like he's not like a known entity. Got it, got it. He, got it. You, you think he's just like gone or whatnot. And then, yeah, just shit happens. It, it's, it's bizarre. It's great. I absolutely – it's one of my favorite – parts in games ever is that whole shinra headquarters which is really good um but yeah i'm sure there's other good parts afterwards i just i i get so far like the world opens up for me i get so far i get past the giant snake in the uh the fog where you have to get to the cave uh for those that know the game know exactly what i'm talking about i hope uh like i get past that and a couple more kind of dungeons or story beats and i just fall off the game for whatever reason yeah so I, I haven't gotten that far, but every time I jump into it, it's like I'll do it for five hours or so, and then just yeah. Yeah, I just, I'm I'm playing a little like an hour or so at a time. I um I'm trying to just grind. I'm just trying to stay ahead of it and just kind of grind out a level or two before I know the next story beat, just so that way when I actually get to the parts, I don't know. Um, I don't like falter and fail and have to keep restarting. There is an invincibility mode built in. Um, oh. If you just want to do the story beats, yeah. I don't want to do that. Yeah, no. Um, it kind of sucks. I feel cheated. I want the, I want the full experience of that game. But uh, do you feel like it's helping you playing it on a TV? Oh, I mean, I don't like it for engagement because I feel like for me the reason definitely I always... for engagement. I, I mean, just just this because like from a portable, yes, you hear the music, but like I don't know. It's I feel like sitting in my chair or in my bed in my room just. What, reading the dialogue for one, the dialogue is much bigger on the on the fucking yeah, screen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and then like just hearing the music and all the oh god, the Final Fantasy VII the music so it's freaking really good. good. Um, yeah, I I think the better experience is on TV. That was the way that game was attended. I mean, PlayStation. Well, 1. that's where I'm, like I feel like every time I've tried to play that game, it's been on a portable, um, and I always end up like, oh, I'm watching this, so therefore I should play Final Fantasy. Like, and it's like. Final Fantasy becomes the secondary rather than the primary. You know where it'd be dope for you? On Switch. It's yeah. never going to come there. Unless the remake goes there, but... They could put that fucking Steam port on there. They would if they cared. I know, man. But Square is, you know, killing it with the... With the... With the caringness, I think. I thought they were going to announce that kind of stuff. This Yeah, I thought too. A- anyway, but yeah. Um, no, just like if for you, it'd be perfect if like, hey... You know, you are you can sit in front of a TV, you do the actual story beats, but then, like, you're watching whatever, on Roseanne, you know, yeah. you're on that Roseanne kick. That's what I keep saying that yeah. for forever. Um, you know, when you're watching Roseanne with Katie, you just pull out the Switch and just, like, just wherever you're at, just level. Just play yeah, 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 for just an hour and just grind a level or two and just keep going. Yeah. Um, I'm also playing it with the strategy guy right next to me, too, so that helps. I know what to look for, maybe what items to steal, that kind of stuff. You're looking for the official you're using I, I have a scan of the official guide, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I was playing. Game's with dope. Them. I love the music. The music alone brings me back. And on top of that, every once in a while, just in the main menu, in that remake, because it came after the uh the tease of the remake, mm. they put in that trailer and it's ah. labeled as a special movie. I just watch it and it's like that game's gonna be good in 2025 when I finally fucking get it. Yeah, well, I'm I'm 40. Um, <laughs> cool. Cool. Yeah, really cool, good game. Cool. Obviously, <laughs> I'm not the first person yeah. to say that. 
FreeCheese.com, a really good game. <laughs> Let's talk about some really good E3 stuff. Square. <laughs> yes. Speaking of really good. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, let's. What were some highlights for you? What was the, the big one? The more I think about it, that Sony conference. Yeah. I think was my favorite. W- overall, something in particular that kind of like it's, it, it's, bumps it over the edge. It's what I remember from that conference. It's seeing The Last of Us and it's seeing Ellie squeeze through that Man. little gap when running away from the characters. It's that level design of she, she could have taken on those dudes head on, but she went into the garage. She could have snuck around. It didn't work out. She had to run and hide. She got under a car. I don't think that was scripted. No, I feel like that, that'll uh, that's play That's all natural gameplay. Like, yeah. It's that Uncharted 4 level design where it feels linear, but it's it's open. Yeah. And the more details I read about that, like right away you point out the Uncharted grass. Well, evidently, depending on the height of the grass, They'll Ellie see. might be more seen than others. Like, yeah. It's, the, it's that Naughty Dog attention to detail going from game to game that – it's gonna I be can't really good. fucking wait when that game comes. Just I, I'm a little sad I don't have any kind of release window, but yeah. I just I know it's gonna be good. Did you listen to the the day one show Mark and I did that morning? I did, yes. So you, that bracelet moment. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. They came out and said what that's about, though. What did they say? I think they said that that does indeed take place after the events of that party. Okay. Yeah. yeah so yeah. yeah, we'll see. But yeah. <laughs> Dude, that, that game, game looks, looks really good. Yeah, and then Ghost of Tsushima, and it, like it, just that whole thing. And I think the biggest shocking moment for all of us here at that house, when or in in your house, was when Resident Evil Two was finally unveiled, and That's we realized huge. what it was. Dude, That's huge! I whispered it to Mark. I was like, Resident Evil Two, when we were behind the eyes of the mouse. Oh yeah, I was like, Guys, they dude. Don't know. Yeah, no, it's really... That's a good unveil, dude. That that got my attention. It was big. I hate horror games, but I think I'm really one. Um, yeah, I just, re- I just remember the most of that conference, and maybe it was because they focused. I knew the four games they were going to focus on. Yeah, they pulled I, and, back yeah. a little bit and, and just kind of tailored it to specific experience. Um, I, I, I'm not going to discredit Xbox's showing. Like, Xbox did the PlayStation thing from a few years ago, and it was like, all right, trailer, trailer, boom, boom, trailer, boom, boom. trailer, trailer. And some of that gets lost in the mix. Like, you could you could probably tell me a couple games. Like, oh, oh, that was that Xbox? Oh, all right, right that's right, right. Um, But there's the ones that stick out, like Ori sticks out yeah. to me. Um, kind of like, yeah, oh, yeah, your Skate 4. Fuck yeah. That's I'm so, so good. I'm, I'm kind of really happy you got that early one because – Every press, fucking press conference would have been worse to gay for. Um, I still, like, all throughout, the, all throughout it, usually, <laughs> I don't know if it was drinking Bing or what it was, but just random. By the pussy, honestly. Random people would tweet shit, and I'd just reply to them, like, oh, cool, man, cool, we're skate for it. It's like nothing, because I'm tweeting to IHOP. <laughs> I think I did tweet to Tony Hawk at some point. Oh. Uh, no, yeah. Um, and then... My most anticipated game, more so than The Last of Us Part 2, Cyberpunk 2077, ended that conference. And I didn't even see any gameplay. I didn't see one thing of gameplay. And me, don't show me a trailer unless it's gameplay. Dude. But all that was in Engine. So that's, I know, that's, that's something. Yeah. You've like, heard about the gameplay. The gameplay, demo, yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. yeah. Sounds, sounds awesome. Can't wait. And that leads me to my most disappointing thing about E3. I don't have a fucking release window for that game. Yeah, no. Nope. Ah, uh, there. You think it's this gen? I don't know, man. That they, Microsoft said a couple things about what is being rumored to be Project Scarlet. All of a sudden, yeah. Uh, Todd Howard said next generation game, and then announced Starfield. Yep. Do you think? We get new consoles next year, or do you think we just hear about them next year? I think we hear about them, definitely, whether or not it's announced formally is another thing. I think Xbox gets out there next year. I think next year is their Project Scorpio year. This is I what can we're, see that. This is what we're doing. Especially with what they did at the end of their conference, or towards the end of their conference. Yeah. This is what we're doing. This is what we're excited to show you. It'll be out next year. 
but we're excited to bridge the gap and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, everything you have now, I'll play forward because that's what they got to do and whatnot. Um, I think the one thing that I was kind of like, hey, Rocksteady. Nothing. Really yeah. nothing from Warner Brothers because even really like Hitman 2 wasn't really at E3. That was all announced beforehand. Yeah. Yeah, it was weird. Uh, no new fighting game, which yep. would probably be Mortal Kombat, as I'm assuming. So, like, I guess. Yeah, it was weird. It was real weird. Ah, uh, you know what though? Like, I'm all aboard the whole Fallout 76 thing or Fallout 4 or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Like, tell me about your game or like tease it before E3. Tell me about your game at E3 on stage, and then give me yeah. release date later in the year. I. I enjoy that for the surprise of it. Like Bloodstained Curse of the Moon was such a like, what? And it's out now. All yeah. right, cool. Um, but at the same time, marketing that kind of stuff in such a tightened space. Well, only select franchises can get away with that. Like Fallout. You yeah. say a new Fallout's coming right away. Like someone like me is just like, when's the date? But even like the Cyberpunk. The, when's the date? You know, like building the hype. I mean, it's tough. Like. It, it's tough, but there's a lot of time between now and November for Fallout. And there, there's a lot of time between if you give it that five month gap or whatever. It just depends on how aggressive you are with the advertising money. Like you just can't announce at E3, come out five months later, and just say, "All right, well, yeah, with yeah no yeah, advertising." Yeah. That Sony learned that the hard way, I think. Yeah. Sony never har- advertised their games on PS3. Yeah, no, not at all. No. I remember seeing like one Twisted Metal commercial. Yeah. That was too little, too late. Um, speaking of Sony, before we get into this who won conversation, or should we, I don't, this Fortnite thing, where, where do you, look, I'm not the Fortnite player, it does suck. Yeah, no, I, neither of us play Fortnite, who gives a shit? <laughs> um, game for babies, but. I think it's dumb, but I don't understand why just Fortnite, because, like, technically, as someone who's played Rocket League across all these different platforms, starting with PS4, like yeah. why didn't it block me out of Switch then? Or because you're not, you didn't log in with a Rocket League account. That's the difference. It's, oh yeah, yeah, it is the Epic. I, I don't know. That's weird. Um, There's gotta be. You see, the thing is, Sony responded and was just like. Sony whatever, responded with a fucking. What is like a whatever? Sorry. It was a fuck you. Yeah. It was a fuck you. We're still on. T- we sold the most consoles, so suck thirty dicks. Um, they can do that. That's the sad part. But. And they did. They said we're always open to hearing what the PlayStation community is interested in to enhance their gaming experience. With more than eighty million active users on PlayStation Network, we built a huge community of gamers who can play together on Fortnite and all online titles. We also offer cross-play support with PC, Mac, iOS, and Android devices. Expanding the opportunity for Fortnite fans on PS4 to play with even more gamers on other platforms. Which is... It's... Yeah. You're not playing with anyone that's not... That's on Xbox or, or Switch. Fuck you. Is what that says. You know what? I mean... Look, I mean, I'm probably the the sort of kind of Sony fanboy at the table here. The, amongst probably the four of us. Um, See? But that's the thing. But like, but, like, even that is, like, just vote with your wallet. Like... But that's see that's where it is, right? Like, I was with you, right, for years. Like in the the PS3 era, I started that era. Like, I don't have that kind of money. I'm 17 or whatever the fuck I was. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think well, my brother got an Xbox, and then I had that choice. What do I do? What do I do? All my friends were on Xbox, and I was like, eh, fuck it. And then like a year later, I bought a PS3 once prices came down a little bit, and then I was back on it like yeah fuck xbox playstation all the way and now i'm at this point where i'm like i don't when we get into the ps5 next xbox territory i'm making some serious thoughts here my main like if we're gonna go into this you know fanboy like argument like my always biggest thing was like all right well you have an xbox why where are your exclusives like i like I have a PlayStation to play games like The Last of Us, Uncharted, True. And like it's, those types. It's of not things. to say that I won't be buying a PlayStation Five. No, 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 no. But yeah, right. But like when I start looking at which one am I gonna, if they come out day and date, which one do I buy first? I, I'm 
leaning toward Xbox only because you've got all of this stuff to make sure that the the fan base is happy, right? And the there's like power behind the console and cool shit happening with that console and the story and the, the marketing and the messaging and whatever. And what's going to happen in three years once these new de- devs that Xbox just acquired start getting their totally. own like and that's and that, th- and that argument like my argument it's it's going to be negated in three years right. It's, it's going to take time for them to get their first projects out, but sure. it's going to be. But they're and they're not going to stop either. You know what I mean? Like this was the first wave of of acquisitions and 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 whatever. they Microsoft will continue to do this kind of shit. Um, it and Sony hasn't really acquired a new or built a new first party studio in forever. I think they closed down five in the last. Yeah, there's, there's a handful. Yeah, uh, it's, I, I don't know. It's it's going to be interesting. Like E three two years from now is going to be one of the most crucial and yeah. important E threes, or like e, I would say maybe years because E three may not be yeah E3's, that thing. But like yeah, you know the two years from now is going to be important when probably these consoles come out. Yeah, it's because it's it's funny. Like for years, like the games sell the platform, but now we're at a point where. People are paying attention to other things. Like, this blew up. Like, the Fortnite thing on the surface level is is something whatever. But on a bigger level, like, it's giving the general... Like, we know what's happening, right? But the general public just sees the headline and, and that puts a bad spin on things. Um, it's, a, it's similar to the people will get a second job for this. Like, that's... Yeah. No, getting, I mean... I don't know. It's It's a weird thing, but I... I didn't want to not bring it up. I just no, no. It's definitely worth bringing it up. I, it's 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 weird and it's bad, and I don't agree with it. I just I'm not more passionate about it because I don't fucking care about Fortnite. No, 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 no. Yeah, not at all. And this was something like Rocket League. That I could easily see me being up in arms right now in this chair, fucking yelling to this mic about yeah, where I mean, the, so, why the fuck don't I have my so account? So if you know? right, like that's the thing. Like if it, if it was the other way around, where everything you'd already done on PlayStation through Rocket League, all the stuff you could earned, all that, if it could carry over and then you were blocked from doing it and you had to start from scratch, that would suck. Yeah. Um, so who won? Sony. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know. Like this, the conference. Just from a conference perspective, who do you think won? Either Xbox or Sony. It is a toss-up. Was it, there because Ubisoft? There's things in there that, like, I don't care about. If anything, it maybe. Yeah, but if we go that argument, like, we could say Gears Pop. <laughs> well, that's where I was getting at. Like Xbox's stuff. Like, uh, I think like a good conference is something that's solid and it's something that's memorable. And maybe sometimes you do overcrowd the other games, like. You yeah. know, f- yes, it's impressive to have 50 games on your stage, maybe 51 or whatever, yeah, with yeah. the final tally. But how many of those 50 games do you remember? All of them. No, but I, the one th- I've been thinking a lot about the Gears Pop thing because it wasn't uh, like Jesus Christ. I it stuck out to us for an obvious reason, but w- I think what was really cool about that moment was one, two, three things for Gears of War fans. It was like. We're we're serious about this franchise, and we want to grow this franchise, and we want to make it bigger than it is. Um, so here you go. Here's a brand new one of what you want. Here's a weird experiment we're doing just on PC, and we're sorry, but yeah, here's this thing too. Um, All right, can't wait to do a Halo next year. Halo Infinite. Mm-hmm. Halo Pop. Yep. And then a weird ass XCOM Halo. <laughs> Dude, I'd be down as. Fuck I know I'd be down for the last two th- or the first two things, but like, oh, not the pop thing. Sorry, yeah, I said that in the middle. Now you're, it, it, yeah, but even like you look at Halo when they brought the uh, the Spartan stuff to iPhone and iPad. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It was a, a way to build that franchise out in a different way. Um, I don't know. Microsoft had sessions, so that's kind of the de facto winner for me there. I just, I don't, I don't know. I was so impressed with The Last of Us. Like, I can't even begin to say how impressed I was. I was really with impressed show. with The Last of Us, but the problem with The Last of Us was it was punctuated by a fucking weird 
it was like it cut and then it was like all right see ya let's move i don't care and about then that. cut to outside it was just a weird but i'm not you see that's the thing i'm not there i don't have to experience that no but we were here and we were like cool yeah this thing's getting stuck wait why are what why are we taking an intermit what the fuck we're four minutes in what's what's going on that was a weird it was weird but like it besides the twitch screen the twitch stream crashing like i was fine with it panning out to give me like ryan clemens or whatever like to let them transition like Get like if you're at E3, give someone a reason to be at E3. Like I think that would be a cool experience. I agree, but that was also a weird. It's weird, and it's just not somewhere used to. Yeah, yeah. I mean, think about it. Like everyone was the trailer, trailer, trailer thing three years ago. Sony was like kind of like the first one that kind of really started that, and yeah. other trends are following suit. And you don't know what yeah, two no. years from now is going to bring. Um. I'm not saying that that's the reason. I just, I just The, the Last both- of Us, Resident Evil 2, and Ghost of Tsushima, uh, whatever that fucking... Tsushima. Yeah, that's it. I'm going to fucking struggle with that for the rest of my life. Uh, yeah, they were both really, really strong. And uh, Death Stranding is still weird. I don't but- know what the fuck that game is. Yeah. And I still think it's going to come out in November, obviously. Right, right, uh, yeah, of course. On Switch. With the Smash character. Uh, <laughs> I think uh, Spider-Man, too. Like We didn't talk about that at all, but... I like I'm, I'm ready. It. I'm good. It. Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. But seeing the Sinister Six come to life was pretty good. I, that's you know game of the year <laughs> contender. I think for me, uh, yeah. I've, once if I, if it pans out to what I think that game's gonna be, yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Uh, I don't right. know. I can't really crown one. I just Sony or Xbox. Like especially thinking about it after the fact. Definitely not Square. I think we can all agree on that one. That's such a fucking just. Slap. Once when EA has a better conference than you, like. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. You are a fuck up. Yep. However, I'm playing Final Fantasy VII, so remember the gold days. Yeah, I don't. Yep. Let's dive back into 14. Um, mm-hmm. Anything else we missed that was like big, cool? Like, oh shit. Um, There's so much fucking stuff. I mean, I mean, the whole fucking direct was dedicated to Smash, and you guys haven't talked about that yet. Like, oh, yeah, so we haven't talked about Smash here. Uh, let's talk about Smash. Well, uh, hold on. Yes. Breaking news. Breaking news. Smash. The Wii Fit Trainer's face has been fixed. Hell yeah. For all the haters out there. Hell Congratulations. Yeah. That got more airtime than the fact that Hollow Knight got shadow dropped and Overcooked 2 is coming to Nintendo Switch. Hell yeah. Very happy. We emphasize that. Nah. Oh, From's game. Oh, yeah. The, Se- the Sekiro. Yeah. Shadows Die Twice. That yeah. looks really good. Yeah. That I, I'd rather play that than Neo, Neo 2. Did that get announced? Yeah, PlayStation Conference. <laughs> yeah. I think um, that was after Resident Evil. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't remember. I don't remember Ubisoft. Oh, Just Dance come the Wii. <laughs> there was something dope out of Ubi. Um, bang, side, bang, side. motherfuckers. That game looks really good. It does look pretty. Is that um, next gen? At this point, I think it is because we're still making content for it. Yeah, it's true. Oh, um, that transcend no transcendence is that the name of that game? Yeah, I know the what Elijah Wood game. About. No, does my Elijah Wood impression on stage? <laughs> no, no, no. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That the VR game is is coming out. That looks weird and cool. Yeah, that's promise. I think. Um, I'm trying to remember. No Splinter Cell. Oh, yeah. No. That was the thing. There were a couple things like that that were just like, yo, what? All right. But, like, dude, next year, like, if you tell me, all right, Splinter Cell is coming, and then, boom, November. I'm like, all right. Like, that's the franchising you do that with. It's fair. Uh, Metroid Prime 4. Still Nothing. got a logo. Yeah. Uh, no Avengers. No Medieval. Don't even all right. Don't even get into the Square Enix stuff. They, they fucked up that conference. I know the fact that they say played the same trailer from the Microsofts. Yeah. For a game that they're a marquee Which, game. To be fair, could be forgivable, right? Think about Square and Microsoft's overlap. Those audiences don't always overlap. That's fine, right? So show the trailer you showed at Microsoft, and then but then bring some dong out. 
and maybe show a level of gameplay. Maybe show the fucking frozen tundra you've been teasing twice now. You know? No, I'm not even gonna start with this. I don't. I, I, that could go on for a whole hour, in my opinion. I know. Um, I'm trying to. I can't remember. It was Ubi? Oh, Bethesda. I, I think they did great. Fallout 72, Rage Andrew WK. Yeah. <laughs> Rage Two, like. Between that, so I've been listening to Andrew WK and Slayer now since the Bethesda conference. Hell yeah. Weirdly, weirdly enough. I uh, kill what I eat <laughs> and I fuck what I kill. <laughs> That's my attitude right now, you know? That guy was rad. Oh, man. No, uh, Bethesda had a very impressive showing. It's just a lot of their games are not tangible. Yeah. 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 I mean, neither is Sony's, but like, you know. At least there was gameplay, right? I was kind of okay with that. I was like, I'm but I saw gameplay for the first time. Then yeah. that's something new. Like, I mean, some fed something new there. Uh, yeah. But um, no, the, the Bethesda's Doom Eternal. We'll see more QuakeCon. Yeah, which is the reason to go to QuakeCon. Hell yeah. Um, I'm just glad they announced Starfield. And I started watching that documentary. Bethesda's dope. <laughs> yeah, they are. Todd for Howard's sure. the dude. Todd Howard, man. God. Um, all right, let's bring home some Smash talk. So, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Are you excited? Yeah. All right. Making sure. No, oh, no, I'm excited. I'm always excited for a Smash. I'm just kind of upset that that's all they talked about. Besides the other game they talked about, which we well, think this fucking website knows how much I hate that goddamn game. Super, um, Super Smash, um, Mario Party. Oh, Mario Party. Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, well, you know what? I, so. Tuesday, we were sitting there, Mark and I and, and uh, our friend Susie watching that Nintendo thing, um, and I figured it out. July is Captain Toad. Ju- well, June's Mario Tennis. Mm-hmm. July is Captain Toad. Right now, I think there's nothing for August or September that we really have out there. October's Mario Party, November's Pokemon, and December Smash. So you bring out something August, September. Right? There's got to be something you can do. What am I missing? I don't, I don't, I don't think you need to. they got to have something. Uh, it's part of a third part. Like, you don't... Like, I get it, but, like, you don't want to do the Sony. I think Sony taught us during the PS3 era, like, just bringing exclusives does not guarantee anything. I only mean that, uh... The way that... Like last year, there was, there was a, a something to play that was brand new on your Switch every month. You know what I mean? Yeah, but like that doesn't mean that like there's not a third party exclusive or something like that. I think you're just talking first party right now. But it could have even been something that was just I don't we don't know that big thing though. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know. I think you can take the two months off. It's not going to kill your console. It's not going to kill your sales. Yeah, but you, you, spe- you got you got but you got Pokemon. That's a game you just let breathe. And even if it is this weird let's go thing, like that's still something you can let breathe. They gotta have a uh, they gotta have something though. Uh yeah, they got Smash coming in December. I know, but I I bet that we get another direct mid to late summer to announce something oh, I coming. Bet, but I don't think you're gonna get anything major in September or August. Not major, but but something. Like you a might Wii U get something. Port. Oh yeah, it's another just fucking port it all over. Just port um Wind Waker H D. No, just port uh Smash for Wii U. <laughs> well they're doing that. <laughs> yeah, they are, yeah. Um anyway, yes, yeah, so Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Literally every character has perfect. ever been in Smash. Which just shuts everyone the fuck up. Thank you. Which yeah. is perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Except the Waluigi fans. <laughs> yeah, rip. Um yeah, Waluigi's an assist trophy, Ugh. along with Bomberman. Um, it really fucking cool. Like, the way they announced that game, um, well, the way they teased it with the Inkling back at that Direct was like... January, <gasps> right? It was March. Seems like longer, doesn't it? But it was, was March. It January? Uh-uh. March 8th, if my memory suits me. Um, and it probably does, because I'm... Something, yeah, something's not that, right uh, up there. Those dually splats. Yeah. Uh, 
yeah, so we uh, Sakurai comes comes on, talks about the game, talks about uh, history of the franchise, et cetera, et cetera. His face the entire time just said, "I'm I done." I know. <laughs> it's just. Um, I made this last port for you all. Go fuck yourself. Yeah, like, come on. My wife I need left rest. Me. Yeah, I've been eating in seventeen years. Um. But when they start showing off like characters and here they are in the order that they've that they were introduced to the series, I was like, huh. And then they were doing it weird. It was like one, fifteen, and thirty four, and then right. in the middle of it, you're like, Oh, and the ice climbers coming back. And you're like, Alright, that's cool, good for Mark. <laughs> once once it's all ice climbers, I was like, What's what are you doing, dude? And they kept going and kept going, and I was like, They're gonna fucking do it all. They're gonna do them all. And like, we're sitting here, like kind of all mouth agape, just like Nuh uh, nuh uh, and then like, yaha. Uh, -huh. uh, yeah, I was really impressed. The that character select screen is gonna suck. Oh, it's gonna be no worse than it is now. <sighs> it's gonna be, big. it's it's fine. Um, the it's character, fine. some cool character changes, I think, you know, like Breath of the Wild Link, he still plays a lot like the Link that you know, but. No more hook shots. You got to get in nice and close to grab them. Um, Samus, you can continue to charge her yeah. ball midair. Yeah, that's that's big for me. Um, they they brought in um, Pooh and Paula for Ness's final smash. They brought in uh, Kumatara and Boney for Lucas's final smash. Uh, what else? Wolf got an update to his look. We fit trainer. We got an update to trainer, our yeah, my favorite. Uh, it, there was a lot. They went through pretty much character by character. Yeah. Um, it's fucking every character back in it. And then even like just general gameplay change, like the dodge, like they get slower. There's that. Yeah. Yeah. If, there's if like you, you can't dodge like more than like three times in a row, or you'll get like a speed penalty for it. Yeah. Um, they also added a diagonal air dodge. Um, yeah. Which that's a new mechanic. That's nice. Um, it's it just sounds like ultimate. I don't know what else you can do with that game, but because like I think the Wii U one's the perfect speed. I think we all saw a slower Smash Bros. with Brawl and it didn't work out quite well. It's yeah. tough. It's really tough to go back to and play that game. The Brawl, yeah, 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 for sure. I think the one thing that's interesting that he he says at the end is like, um there will probably be another one of these in the future, but we'll never be able to put all of these characters in it again. So I hope you enjoy this. And I also hope you don't expect many more characters to come around this time. Um, but that's an interesting thing, like to think about what the next smash brothers is. Like, you, you go back to a basic 12, like wh I, whoever has to figure that out. You ready for I, this? You ready for this? Two. Two characters? No, no, no. Super, oh, you're talking about the number of characters. I'm talking about, like, what do you even, what's the roster look like next time? It's the same as the N64, and you call it Super Smash Brothers 2. All right, just 12 characters? 12 characters. Two. But you put the number two on it, and people are going to fucking throw their $60 for pre-orders. Might be 70 at the time. Who knows? Oof. Inflation, you know? I'm, I don't know. I'm hoping we're at a point now where the Switch is has a long, healthy life ahead of it. And even when they do a Switch 2, that'll be fully backwards compatible Switch with... Switch 2. Yeah. Launching with Smash Bros. 2. There it is, dude. I I got this. But you could still play this on it if you want. And... Nah. You know, <laughs> no, just... Just poor it. Ultimate as yeah. Ultimate 2. <laughs> um, all right, well, let's close this thing out. But right now, we're sitting at a cool 65 characters with Ridley, our Maybe newest 65th. edition. 65th, yep. Um, I'm looking at it just from a pure character selection standpoint, 70 seems like a good clean number, especially because of the way their website is lined up. Mm, I see what you're saying. There's mm -hmm. Ridley mm -hmm. blank blank. You could totally do blank blank and then three more blanks. Fill it in. I say let's get this baby to 70. So who's a shoe in? You want to do five each? In. You want to do five each? Or you want you want to build it together? I don't have a good five. <laughs> I'm like looking at your. This is the one time your Amiibo collections kind of come in handy. I can't. Yeah, but Matt, they're already in it. I know that's the fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here's 
I'm gonna go out. I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. You're five. Well, all right. Here's the thing. The Smash League prior to E3 stated that the entire roster from the last game would be in there, and Ridley would be announced at E3. With that in mind, and they and the league also stated Simon Belmont's coming. So with that, I say Simon Belmont's in. I feel pretty good about it. There you saw Bomberman's an assist trophy. Snake's back in. Konami doing things, right? So also Konami's got a new sports game coming to Switch. Did you see that? I don't care. You might. What is it? It's like a I don't I'll show you. All it's, right. it's a it, it's like a an NES game that no one remembers and they're remaking it. Great. But it it's like a track and field kind of thing or it, you you might Esports? I mean, it is electronic sports in a way, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, so I think Simon's in. We've got these new Echo characters, right? Yeah, that's the interesting part about this. I don't think we're going to see too many more Echo characters. We could. could. We might. But I think the one that's a shoe in Dixie Kong. Echo of Diddy. Slight tweaks to her moveset, but essentially Diddy's moveset. Not Funky Kong? I mean, you could throw in Funky <laughs> You, maybe you get a maybe you get a, a Donkey Kong Echo for for Funky, but I think Dixie makes so much sense. All right, highly requested. Everybody wants her. Do it. Not bad. I don't know if you recall, but there's a game that's celebrating its uh, one year anniversary right now. Oh yeah. Yeah. Arms. Arms. I bet we get a Springman Ribbon Girl. I don't know how that. I don't know if that's the way to do it. If you do, they're too big. The arms are too big. <laughs> But I don't know if you do a Springman Ribbon Girl, like, kind of. You might be able to pull off some costumes. Isn't the Pokemon Trainer, um... Yeah, like... but I don't know how much that... Like, the Pokemon Trainer is really just a palette swap. It's not so much a... Like... I mean, could you do that, though, for... You're... In this case, like, three and three? Like, in the I would... sele- outfit selection? I would think so. I mean... I mean, you don't have to fit you know with what? the lore. Yes. yes, because... Because... What's it called? Robin, and the other one, Batman. <laughs> Robin and I don't know, Sheik, 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 no. Sheik, whatever the fuck his name is. There was another uh, character you could Shock. choose. That's what I meant to say, not Sheik. Not Shock, because Robin you could choose male or female. Robin, right. and their character models were completely different, but they did the same move set. So yeah, Springman Ribbon Girl. That's fine. I think. This next one's a little weird, okay? Ubisoft, big partner with Nintendo. We saw uh, not only the Mario and Rabbids game, but you see Star, Star Fox. Fox in Starlink. So I think there's a Ubisoft rep. My initial thing was like, well, if you're Ubi, you're going to put Rayman in it, right? Or Glass from Rainbow Six. <laughs> the fucking sniper. But then I thought about it, and I'm like, this... This generation of Smash Brothers needs a what the fuck character, right? Like, you had Mr. Game and Watch, you had Rob, you had Duck Hunt. So Duck the, Hunt's the what the fuck character of all those, but all right, go ahead. No, but Mr. Game and Watch, when you first saw it, you're like, huh? How about the Wii Fit Trainer? Fucked up face or non fucked up that's face? That's true. <laughs> she made sense, though. But that's where I'm like, maybe Rayman's too obvious. Maybe you do a Rabbids. Maybe. Maybe you can bring in, like, the, well, not the assets, but, like, the outfits modeled after, like, Rabbit Peach, Rabbit Luigi, Rabbit, uh, yeah. uh Mario. They, uh, yeah, fuck Yoshi, them. Do it Mario, all. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe not Yoshi. I think Yoshi would be a little bit different. Mm. But, but maybe a Rayman. Possibly. That So, I think we're only getting one more. If we get Simon, I think we're only getting one more. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't care how much I spike the mic there. Crash. There you go. Jesus Christ. That was the most <laughs> demonic horror. thing. Yes. I you saw the uh, the levels spike there. They didn't spike. That was a whole solid block. <laughs> uh, no, I think we're only getting one third party. So it's, I think, in addition, Simon, I think, is shoe But in addition to that, if we're going to get another one, could be Crash. I would love Crash. Uh, it's just, I don't think it's realistic at this point. Could um, be Rayman. Could be Gino. Those are the Street Fighter 
Wait, no, who's, who's Gino? Gino I'm, from Super Mario RPG. That's right. Yeah, that's what he said. Yeah, before. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know, dude. I'm trying to think what's on that. What's on those classic machines? You know, what's something that we... That's, Third party? Yeah. I don't know, like a dumb secret of my character or, I don't, like, mm. I don't know, like... Do a black mage? I don't know. But... Ultimately, we're seeing a return to form. Oh, shit. Fuck me. Never mind. I'm an idiot. They got to do 10 characters, Matt. That's what they got to do. They can't just do five. It's got to be 10. What Captain I... Toad. Dude's got to come out. Dude fucks. He's got to be in this game. But I was also going to say Ashley from WarioWare. Oh, uh, yeah. They're, they're trying to make that franchise come back again, you know? That'd be nice. Yeah. What's some of the characters from, like, Mario Tennis? Like, could we do see, like, a weird chain shop? Could we... That's your what-the-fuck character. As a fully playable... He fucking trophy. plays tennis now. That's true. I'd rather play as a boo than... Dude, I would fuck a boo. How yeah. about any Animal Crossing besides the Killager? Mark really wants Isabel. Check that makes see. sense. Yeah. I wonder why. I know. Go visit his Mitomo room if he still can. I'm gonna find out if you can. <laughs> I'm gonna find out while we close out the show. Uh, well, yeah, there it is. E3 is in the bag. Are there any other uh, Splatoon like assist trophies, like a Marie and? Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's yeah, the stage that yeah. uh, comes in. That's right. Mitomo has ended its service. Support uh, for the application will end on August 30th. Augustiniac. I get it. Yep. Wait. Or not the fuck does it want me to oh man i what else can you throw in like is there another pokemon character do they do ds do they (laughs) oh my god can they will they do dlc like maybe Ah. there's an eighth gen pokemon whenever that comes yeah i was thinking like maybe deciduo that owl boy from gen 7 yeah i don't know Maybe uh, the Lone Wander from Fallout 4. That's probably, yeah. Uh, maybe Morgan Yu from uh, Prey. <laughs> Female I, and male. You got the three yeah, palace of swaps, of course, um, with a mimic assist trophy. <laughs> I cannot get into Mitomo. Oh, man. Well, for those that had the opportunity to see Mark's room, you want to know that he's a big Isabel fan. Sure is. Um. That's E3. Natty Bowman? Yeah. I present? Hope, yeah, hope yeah. Um, Alexander Ovechkin. The Cavs, the Cavs want to stay on the cup. Can we That's just it? celebrate that for yeah. a second? I know. Congratulations. Thanks, man. Yeah. How about Pikmin character? Oh, we already have Al. Yeah. We got Al. I'm like, looking at all these games on your shelf, and I'm just trying to find one. And then, yeah, that's right. They're already all part of the 165 fucking – or not 165 characters. That's fucking crazy. How about Box Boy? I'd fuck with Box Boy. He just does nothing. Bloodborne. Yeah, I can get a hunter in there. I'd be alright with that. It's too bad it's Sony owned, but yeah. Fuck it, put Goku in, dude. <laughs> just bring the whole Jump Force cast in. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Jump. Go. That's your next Smash game. Jump Force Cross Smash. Cross Tekken. Cross Marvel. <laughs> Perfect. Because Marvel and Marvel vs. Capcom is really they in bad something. shape. Man, I really wanted Darkstalkers to come back this E3. That's that. That's not an E3 thing. That's a that's a direct thing. At not that's not a Smash Direct at E3 thing. Because did you just want that to be a sizzle reel? No, you want them to talk about it a little. bit. I wanted them to talk about it at Sony's thing. I thought I don't have time. Yeah. Six games in and out. Well, I think it was a little more, but yeah. essentially. Can we talk about the little clever dreams thing that Sony did real fast? That was cute. That right. was that a was good cute. way of keep throwing dreams in there without like saying like here's dreams and this or is without what it is. saying like here's a release date. <laughs> That's another thing. <laughs> Why would you do that for a game? Well, that's Sony's been pretty good with the games they show so far. So I don't know, man. That thing's hitting Last Guardian territory. It really is, isn't it? Yeah. That, you know when they showed that game off? When they showed off the PlayStation, the PlayStation 4. Four. Yeah. Wild. Over five years ago. Over, yeah. February was five years. Speaking of, you think uh, the Last Guardian team hits PlayStation 5? 
Did they announce? They didn't announce the next thing yet. No, but you think uh, they hit PlayStation Five with that project? Yeah. Yeah. I could see that. For sure. Um, all right, let's go get some Taco Bell. Yeah, I'm down. Free Cheese is a weekly video game podcast about video games. Uh, it's been a little quiet on the website just because we've been doing these shows and watching E3 so and they're not whatever. Quiet on the podcast. No, front, though. no. But we got uh, we got some video stuff this week. We should take a look at uh, Splatoon and something else. What the fuck else came? We got to finish Castlevania, dude. We do have to finish Castlevania. Right, right. Yeah, we were, we were right at Dracula before the fucking thing video died. thing. Yeah. So we saw Dracula. Yeah, we did. Just didn't we get him. die a lot, but we saw Dracula. <laughs> There was uh, something else I've been digging around with that I wanted to look at. I've been slowly rebuilding a list of wrestling roster again. Oh, yeah. I still didn't see your nightmare you created. There's a couple I nightmares now. I do not remember the other game. but Dude, Sackboy. That's your last character. There he is. <laughs> Sackboy for Smash. 2018. I'm calling it. Um, Yeah. We'll be back next week. We should have a full crowd next week. I think that's it. Follow us on Twitter. Free cheese is at some free cheese. Matt is at Matty Ice one three one. Tweet him and find out if he uh, fixed his computer. Let me know what you thought of Money in the Bank. I'll be watching that live. Yeah. And I am at the free cheese. Will Dean Ambrose come back? We don't know. Who? Well, those listening right now, they know. I don't know yet, though. You don't. Tweet at me when you find out, though. Because we're in the past. That's my spooky ghost voice. Did you catch that? Mm -hmm. You get it? Dude, Mark Henry, back. I know, shocking. Sexual chocolate himself. Is he really? No. Oh, all right. Oswald's sexual chocolate now, though. That's true. Forever and ever. Gosh. Um, final thoughts? E3 was dope. It was a good E3. It got me to listen to Andrew W. Kane Slayer. I think that wins. I agree. I fully agree. <laughs> um, cool. Well, we will see you next week. Thanks for hanging out. Um... Matt, thanks for hanging out. Listeners, thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.